While Chris Hansen is out and about fighting the good fight across the US, there are some untold stories that he's kept on the down low. Like what happened when this crazy dude walked into the sting house, for instance. I was chatting online with a decoy, and he wants this girl to do this bizarre sex act that involves whipped cream and a cat. If you haven't guessed already, I'm talking about the Fort Myers, Florida sting, where a guy made his entrance with absolutely nothing on. You see, this particular guy had something truly bizarre in mind. And what exactly that entailed? Well, it involved whipped cream and cats. Yeah, I don't get it either, so don't bother asking. Now, let's get the inside scoop from Chris himself. In an interview, he shared some details that we didn't get to see during the sting. This guy peels off his clothes. Yeah. And he's coming around the corner at a high rate of speed. And yeah. he's coming right for the room where we're all set up. Sure. But wait till you hear about one of the funnier things that happened during the operation. And I go for the door, and he's got his hand on the other side, and I don't know who was more shocked when the door opened. I mean, yeah, seeing an adult man show up like that, it's not hard to imagine what might have gone through Chris's head there. This case stands out as a truly unforgettable moment in Chris's career. It left a lasting impression on both the crew and us folks at home. Because if someone can show up completely uh, natural without batting an eye, who knows what they're capable of. But what I'm about to reveal next is pretty telling about Chris Hansen's personal life. Back in 2011, he actually found himself in hot water for a change. And then in 2011, uh, it was exposed that you were having an affair. That's right. He was found in the midst of an extramarital affair, and the object of his affection was none other than another reporter named Kristen Cadell. But here's the real shocker. Uh, with a woman that was 22 years younger than you? Yeah, she happened to be a staggering 22 years younger than him. Definitely ironic considering the dude's day job. I guess even the most public figures have their share of personal complexities going on, huh? And if this wasn't enough, things got even spicier when the good old paparazzi caught Chris and Kristen together in a pretty compromising position. They were caught sharing a kiss after a dinner date at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Manelapin, Florida. The couple then returned for the night to her Palm Beach apartment. But that wasn't all. He got caught because uh, the National Enquirer had a sting operation on him. And all of this was caught by hidden cameras in the vicinity. The layers of irony just keep building. Chris got played at his own game. Anyway, the affair caused a lot of damage to both Chris's and Kristen's careers. With TCAP already having a ton of bad press, this affair was the final nail in the coffin that led to NBC firing Chris from the network altogether. He continued working as a journalist on his own, focusing on continuing the mission that TCAP started. Meanwhile, on the personal front, his wife filed for divorce. After doing something as unforgivable as what he did, there's no way I'd forgive him either, so I get where she's coming from. But Chris's take on this time in his life is pretty interesting. How'd your wife take it? You know, uh, it wasn't a big issue in my life. It just wasn't. However, as Chris himself pointed out, the incident didn't seem to be a significant issue in his life. Couldn't tell you whether or not he's sugarcoating the situation, but that's what he said. What are your thoughts? Feel free to share your perspective with me in the comment section below. I'm always dying to hear what you guys have to say. As for Kristen Cadell, in an open letter, she wrote about how her highly publicized affair closed just about every door as far as her career was concerned and she practically became jobless. Now, like I just hinted at, there was more than one reason that TCAP ended up getting the axe. However, there's nothing that can match up to the impact Lewis Conrad's story had on the show. The assistant DA began having explicit conversations with the setup, and it was in no way an innocent conversation. They never are, but I just wanted to make that clear. He got pretty got sexual on the phone and it's recorded. We're chatting with him right now. I'd like to if you let me. The phone number he gave us traced to his home phone. Yeah, Conrad even went as far as to send some explicit pictures. So far so normal as far as TCAP is concerned, right? But remember, this dude wasn't just an ordinary guy. 
he was an assistant DA. So, to make a long story short, a sting was set up to catch Conrad in the act, but it didn't go quite as well as most of the other operations did. Although he was invited by the decoy, the DA never showed up at our undercover house. He never showed up at the sting house. Bummer, right? Well, whatever happened, happened. But with the help of the police, Chris set out to personally catch and bring down this morally corrupt man at his own house. As we mentioned earlier, because the prosecutor doesn't live in Murphy, Chief Myrick has turned over the job of arresting him to local police in Conrad's hometown of Terrell. Maybe he felt he had a duty to because of his station? Who's to say? Now, this was the first time the Sting was moving out of the Sting house and taking the show on the road. At least to a suspect's own house, that is. But things were about to go south. When they tried to enter the house, having a sergeant who knew Conrad knock on the door, he didn't answer. We really hoped, as they knocked on the door, that Mr. Conrad would peer out through the peephole, through a window, or whatever, and he would see a face that he would recognize. After some prying around, a TV and a computer were turned on and visible from the windows, which meant someone had to be in the house. So, in a collective decision, the police waited 45 minutes to bring in a tactical team to bust into Conrad's place. But they couldn't have been ready for what came next. Then, we hear a faint crack. The officers force their way in. On confronting Conrad, they saw he was armed. The team was on alert, but in a surprising twist, Conrad told the cops he wasn't going to harm them. And before the cops could say or do anything, he pulled the trigger on himself. This incident caused a lot of damage to the show's reputation, and because of it, it inevitably had to be taken off the air. But here's the inside scoop of how Chris, the man whose life was completely changed because of the show, felt about it. I don't feel responsible for it. I sleep well at night and did after the fact. We completely reported on it the next morning. Okay, I'm gonna put the negative vibes away for a while. Show of hands, how many of you guys are into the boys? If you thought you knew all there was to know about the show, think again. Okay, so here's a little secret for all the TV and movie detail buffs out there. What William Butcher did, he murdered Vaught Vice President Madeline Stilwell using upwards of 30 pounds of C4. Yeah, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. Chris made a surprise cameo appearance on the show in the first episode of season two. Social media absolutely blew up, with fans going wild over that single scene he was in. And it's still a hot topic among the fandom to this day. If you were in the know already, I tip my hat to you. But if not, well, now you are. But Chris has been doing more than just cameos. I've gone into more detail about it in a few of my earlier videos, but in the spirit of making the unknown known, I'm talking about the podcast Predators I've Caught. Now, this podcast is, of course, hosted by Chris, and it's all about taking a trip down memory lane and offering a deep dive into the fateful encounters he had on TCAP. Parenting is tricking your kid into doing what you want them to do without them and let them think it's their idea. <laughs> and he's not only got behind the scenes insights, but he's even releasing the chat logs in their entirety, unfiltered and uncensored. Not for the faint of heart, I tell ya. Whether you're a dedicated true crime enthusiast or simply intrigued by what goes on behind closed doors on the internet, Chris's podcast is a hell of a listen. And you can find it, well, wherever you get your other podcasts. Now, despite the vast digital landscape we have access to these days, it sucks to see that so many people still struggle to exhibit basic human decency. It gets to the point where I say, well, there's something you need to know. And um, I'm Chris Hansen. He said, I knew that. I said, well, how did you know? He goes, I'm 49 years old, I watch TV, everybody knows that. While Chris has made his opinions very clear on his podcast, there's this one TCAP episode that I think stands out from the rest. You see, Vincent Ambrosio's encounter with Chris is unforgettable, like an instant classic. But it initially wasn't shown to the public. I, I have no motivation to finish it. Yeah, you heard me right. Chris Hansen initially opted to withhold the release of his encounter with Ambrosio, a decision that was motivated by heartfelt concern for the man's mental well-being. 
But the story got pretty wild when Chris decided to spill the beans over on his Hansen vs. Predators channel. Chris ended up totally flipping the script. I'm bad. I can't do anything. Well, Ambrosio was pretty miserable, but a crime is a crime. It's important to note that this unique release of footage marked the one and only instance of exclusive content Chris ever shared on his channel. This move sparked considerable intrigue and discussion among his audience, making it a defining moment in his content creation journey. And it honestly makes me wonder if he's got other hidden lost episodes stored away on some tape somewhere. Speaking of, have you noticed that Chris's demeanor isn't always the same at the Sting House? Yeah, it changes from person to person. Apparently, there appears to be a prevailing notion that Chris may exhibit a degree of bias towards individuals from the southern United States, occasionally lightheartedly poking fun at their accents in either his in-person interactions or in the editing process. This tendency was notably conspicuous during his interview with Timothy Isaac. Really? Yeah. Now, do you want to rethink that and tell the <clears throat> truth this time, or do you want to stick with that story? Those regional accents probably spiced up their convo a bit, huh? But here's the deal. What we pick up on can be kind of personal, you know? Like, it's all open to interpretation. But from where I'm standing, I'm not getting any vibes of bias in this situation. I think that Chris was trying to create a comfortable enough atmosphere in order for the guy to feel like opening up. And guess what? It worked like a charm. This situation put Chris's skill when it comes to interviewing strategy on full display, and it played a really big part in making the investigation a success. Like, creating that trust and getting a seasoned liar to sing? That's some top-notch skill right there. Now, for all the parents out there trying to wrap their heads around cybercrime in the modern era, this next fact is worth paying attention to. Despite how dated it might appear to be, Chris took his commitment to keeping children safe a step further than his usual Stinghouse stomping grounds, and he took the time to document the knowledge he'd gained along the way. He authored a compelling book bearing the gripping title, To Catch a Predator, Protecting Your Kids from Online Enemies Already in Your Home. A hell of a title if I've ever seen one. Might need to steal it for my next video. Ahem. <clears throat> Anyway, within this book's pages, Chris provides a wealth of insights and practical advice tailored to parents in a bid to empower them with the knowledge to help protect their own children from the dangers of the internet, something that was already in just about every home when the book was published in 2007. And honestly, it is something that needs to be talked about more openly. The internet has only gotten more commonplace since he wrote this book, and it's only ever going to get more and more intertwined with our everyday lives. Like, sound off in the comments if you're watching this on a phone. Speaking of phones, it's also available as an audiobook. And I think Todd McLaren does a pretty good job as a stand-in for Chris, especially when it comes to answering some of the behind-the-scenes questions about the show. Have you ever just wanted to reach over the kitchen counter, grab one of these guys by the collar, and throttle him? Of course but doing so would be inappropriate on many levels. Now that I think of it, I've got a ton of silly questions of my own. As heavy as the subject matter of the show can be, it can be downright hilarious at times. By sharing his insights and experience, Chris offers a unique behind-the-scenes look at the show's journey, shedding light on the intriguing and sometimes absurd difficulties that come with tackling the world of online weirdo investigations. And it seems like Chris didn't only write his own book, but also used it to start a whole new mission. And well, he didn't stop with just writing his thoughts down and calling it a day. Chris was itching to get back into action. And so, it was time for another show to fill Teacap shoes. Oh yeah, I'm talking about Takedown with Chris Hansen, exclusively available on the streaming service True Blue. The show's premise remains true to his roots. He's still tirelessly investigating and collaborating with law enforcement to take down sickos preying on the innocent. How did you meet this 14-year-old girl? Uh, an app? Chris's unwavering dedication to this cause speaks volumes about his commitment, which is what truly sets him apart, along with his authenticity. 
He isn't concerned about maintaining a flawless face or projecting an image of perfection. Like, just think back to some of the stuff I covered earlier in the video. Instead, he's not afraid to acknowledge his own missteps, demonstrating a willingness to learn and grow from his experiences. While Chris has faced his fair share of controversies, it's crucial to note that none of these issues have inherently made him a hypocrite. He's a person who acknowledges his mistakes, strive to learn from them, and remains dedicated to advancing the cause of justice. Some of the people who've showed up at the Sting House ought to take a page out of his book. Maybe literally. In an era where journalism and the freedom of the press have faced numerous challenges, his commitment to these values is pretty noble. And I have massive respect for the man. Be that as it may, it still doesn't explain to me the thought process in your mind. However, despite all his good deeds, it seems like Chris's financial situation, at least for a brief while, wasn't exactly a bed of roses and rainbows. Now, before I continue, let me remind you that you can now get access to some crazy behind-the-scenes moments of my own, as well as gain access to loyalty badges and custom emoji by clicking on this tab right here. What's more, you also stand a chance to win some exciting prizes throughout the year. And by the way, if you want to keep the discussion going, I got the perfect platform just for you. I'm talking about my channel's Discord server, where we can take a deeper dive into more secrets from Chris's life in real time. And for those of you looking for something extra, I got an exclusive server just for you. With that, let's get back to the video. Turns out, TMZ has the inside scoop on some pretty serious eviction drama that unfolded right in the heart of Manhattan. If there was a landlord-tenant issue that got resolved again. It, it, it was much more was made of it than actually. According to legal documents, it turns out Chris last coughed up rent way back in August 2018, but there was a little hiccup. He was $400 short on the payment. And here's the twist. He decided to just stop sending those rent checks altogether. Definitely not a good move. Looks like the landlord had finally had it with the whole situation. So they decided to take legal action by filing eviction paperwork. Not a good look for our guy here. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, the landlord made the claim that Chris allegedly owed a jaw-dropping $3,600 for September of that year alone. The lesson I think is that, at least for me, you have to make sure that you completely conduct yourself in, in the appropriate way. However, since 2019, when all this went down, Chris has come a long way and has raked up enough money to last a lifetime. But it wasn't just his property woes that contributed to that financial crunch. Remember the divorce I talked about earlier? According to his wife, Mary Joan, their once long-term marriage had deteriorated to a point where reconciliation seemed impossible. The ending of such a long-standing relationship was, no doubt, a difficult and emotional process for everyone involved. It was, you know, I've said everything I'm gonna say on it, you know. It was, you know, it was a National Enquirer story. In her legal action, Mary sought alimony, which involved financial support following the divorce, as well as a fair division of their property and debt. Divorces, especially when financial matters are involved, can become complex and challenging. Additionally, going through separation after sharing so many years together can be especially tough. Both Chris and Mary Joan faced difficult moments as they navigated the process of moving forward separately. I guess there was uh, some video of the it two was, of you. There was a, you're, what you're referring to is a tabloid story that got legs for a couple of weeks. Honestly, even this long after it went down, it really sucks to think about. So those were some of the least known facts about Chris Hansen that I could think of. If you think I missed anything, be sure to drop your thoughts in the comments below. And before you go, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to show your support by dropping a like, subscribing, and turning on my post notifications. Also, if you thought this video was crazy, then make sure to check out the next one right here. It's even better.